What up, everybody? Welcome to Fall Out Football. Today I woke up feeling dangerous. No way. Wrong quarterback line. Well, you know, since it is our draft video, we got to talk about the most controversial prospect, the future NBA young boy of the... George Pickens. So, right before, in honor of his amazing... His amazing pose. I'm going to try to nail it right here. So, let's see. If I remember correctly, this. Boom. Okay. How's my form? Say it in the comments. Oh, the front line football. I'm going to be wearing this the entire video because I feel like a freaking menace to society. I'm ready to mess some players' names up and mess up some teams' grades. Let's get right into the video. All right, guys, we're going to do draft grades. We're going to start off with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, Josh, go ahead. Okay, so the Jaguars picks. Shoot, I need 2022, not that. Okay, so the Jaguars, they had a pretty good draft this year, you know, all things considered with their program. I think that their first pick was a little bit of a reach. Trayvon Walker, I would much rather take an Aiden Hutchinson. But altogether, from their draft, I got to give it a good, probably B. It's pretty good for the first round, especially with Devin Lloyd. That made it a lot better, so I'm going to give them a B. Zach? I have to give him a B plus. I like the Trayvon Walker pick. He's going to be a really good run stuffer, especially in this bad division. Uh, Devin Lloyd really helps. I mean, you should have kept Miles Jack, but it's hard to keep him. Um, and then that's a pretty good first round. They got some pretty decent guys in the second and third round. Um, but I like this. I'm going to give it a B. What about you, Jack? I'm going to go with a B plus. I'm going to be generous. I like Trayvon Walker's upside moving forward and like Zach said he's gonna have an immediate impact in the run game I think Trayvon Walker could develop into the best player of this class easily so it's worth rolling the dice on and I think Devin Lloyd's pretty good pick he was arguably the best linebacker in this draft he's versatile and he can help replace Miles Jack and create a pretty formidable linebacker core in Jacksonville pairing with the Falcons guy that led the league in tackles I'm not even gonna attempt to say his name but he is very good so pretty good job on the Jags they kept building up their defense in this first round all right, our next team is the uh, the not Jack, Detroit Lions. Uh, I'll be taking this one. Uh, I'm actually gonna give the Lions an A. Um, they had a really good draft, getting Aiden Hutchinson, bringing the hometown kid back to Michigan. Um, and then the other thing is Jameson Williams. Jameson Williams will be a huge threat in having Amar Ross St. Brown on the other side. Jared Goff will have an easier time making good reads. They also got some really good things in the back half of the draft. Um, so, yeah, and they also got some pretty good value from trading down. So, yeah, pretty good. Um, what about you, Jack? I'm going to give the Lions. I'm going to be... Uh, a little more tame with the A pluses, keeping them very limited. So I'll give them a high A. I think they did a good job. They got arguably the best pro ready pass rusher in the draft in Aiden Hutchinson. That's a pretty good pick. Home run on your part from Michigan. Makes a lot of sense. Best available. And then they traded up for James Williams 20 spots. I think it would be worth it. If he gets healthy, he could arguably be the best receiver in this draft. And the Detroit could be looking at the best receiver and best pass rusher in this draft moving forward. So you can't really complain. Fix both sides of the ball. Built your receiving core with Amra in it, and you signed DJ Chark, and you added to a much needed pass rush, pass rush that Detroit's kind of lacked these last couple of years. So I'm going to give it an A. What about you, Josh? I'm also going to be giving this draft an A. I think with Jamison Williams and Aiden Hutchinson's, I think those are some great value. That second round pick, don't really know him that well. I'm going to have to see what he does. But from his name, Josh Pascal. I've seen a little bit of tape on him. He looks pretty good playing edge at Kentucky, so it's pretty cool. They got that edge presence set and a receiver to help him on Raw next year, so I'm going to give him an A for this draft. All right, cool. Um, Our next team is the Houston Texans. Josh. The Houston Texans. I was following this draft because we got our first-round pick for the first time in a while. 
have to say, we have to B. Because the Texans, they had a good draft. If you're looking at it from the numbers and you're looking at all the different picks, we are going to be just discussing our big name picks. So our first was a little bit of a reach with Derek Stingley, but that was probably the value of him. So B for that. Kenyon Green was good. He just was the second best guy I would have rather had Zion, but getting a Texas kid in there is good too. So, and then the second round, we got John Mechie. So, I'm glad that the Texans hit what they needed to hit, and they made it look good. So, I'm going to have to give this draft a good B, maybe a B- minus if I'm being pessimist. So, I'm going to end this one off to Jack. I'm going to give this one a high B. I think they did a good job addressing needs, even if it wasn't the exact value necessarily. I think Stingley has a massive ceiling if he could activate that freshman form again, and he could be like a lockdown corner for years to come. I think that was a solid pick. A little high for three, but that's okay. And then secondly is uh, Green, Kenny Green, or Kenyon Green. Solid guard. He's going to be able to start immediately. He'll be able to have that impact for Mills in the offensive line. So you can't really complain. It's not necessarily like home runs, but pretty solid picks, and they address positions of need. So I'll have to call this a pretty good draft on Houston's part. What about you, Zach? I'm going to give it a B+. Plus. Um, Derek Stingley is a great. <coughs> Sorry about that. Derek Stingley is a great player. Um, and I had him at one before I've seen his injuries and inconsistency. But very, very talented player. King and Green's all right. It's a little bit of a reach there. And um, Zion Johnson is a little bit better in a passing. But they're going to be using a power running game, hopefully with Rex Burkett and uh, Marlon Mack. And then the, the other two picks I want to mention is John Mechie. I really like that pick. Uh, he has blazing speed. The only reason he fell down boards is because of an ACL tear, and the Texans got a pretty good pick there. And uh, Jalen Petri uh, Petrie, oh, I'm sorry about that, um, and he can play a very good slot corner when uh, they have to get rid of Desmond King, and he can play a really good over-the-top safety if need be. All right, our next team is the New York Jets. Jack? All right, I'm going to give the Jets... One of my two, probably, a plus is drafts. I think they did a great job with three first-round picks. They got Sauce, the best corner available at their position of need, so I think that was a great pick. Then you get Garrett Wilson at 10, another position that you needed. Could get a number one receiver in this draft that you're looking for. Pair him with Elijah Moore. That is going to be really good and explosive. And then last but not least, you knock it out of the park. Jermaine Johnson slips, and you're able to slide up with the Titans and get your pass rusher that you also needed. So you addressed your three biggest needs, on your team with high-end players that could all be argued to be potential top 10 picks the day of the draft. So I think they did a great job overall, added to the pass rush, added to the receivers, and most importantly, got their potential next Darrell Revis level cornerback that can lock down for the next 10, 15 years. So I'm going to give it an A+. Great job. They also did a pretty solid job in the second, second, third rounds. They got Breesy Hall as the main pick. He could be their bell cow running back to pair with Carter, but overall, Nice job adding to offense and defense, keeping it balanced, and finding great value at each one of their picks. What about you, Josh? Well, I'm going to also have to give this an A+. Plus. It's very rare, but I think that the Jets with Joe Douglas, they did a very good draft this year. And I'm just congratulating everyone in the organization. They made moves. They saw what needed to be done. They got it done. So, I'm going to have to say A+. Plus. All right, I'm going to say this is also an A+. Plus. I like the Sauce pick. I like the Garrett Wilson pick. I love the Jermaine Johnson pick, especially for that value. And Brees Hall is like one of the most underrated picks, especially because the Jets may have a lot of good picks. Uh, with this, I think the only thing that they need to kind of work on is just getting, I guess, more linebackers, and that's it. Um, but other than that, I think this is an A-plus draft. Uh, Joe Douglas uh, made smart moves. He kept it safe and aggressive, so pretty sp solid picks. All right, our next team is the New York Giants. Uh, Jack. Giants? This one's tough. I'm going to give them an A, probably. Their first two picks were home runs. Mid-rounds kind of fell off, but I can't complain too much with this draft. You get Kayvon Thibodeau, who slips to five. This guy's got a monster ceiling and can be your premier pass rusher. Potentially, cannot complain about that pick. 
That is very good for the way the board fell. And then you managed to snag Evan Neal, arguably tackle one at seven to pair him with Andrew Thomas. So you were able to fix both sides of the ball, specifically in the offensive line and the defensive line. That is a home run draft. You have game-changing trench players here. Kayvon Thibodeau could become a premier pass rusher while Evan Neal can become a premier tackle. That is some high-end talent. I think that alone makes this draft a great success for the Giants. I'm going to give them a high A. What about you, Zach? I'm actually going to give them an A, not an A+. Plus. Uh, they could have done better in the back half of the draft, um, but that's nitpicky at the best. Um, I like the Kayvon Thibodeau and Evan Neal pick. These picks are really helpful, especially in the defensive trenches and the offensive trenches. It's very hard to get some generational talent like these two that they could be, and I think that they could be very solid, especially because they're, they were regarded as the number one defensive end and the number one tackle before the season started and you got them at five and seven so pretty good honestly and what about you josh uh for this i would like to grade it an a plus for their first i'm going strictly off of first round picks maybe a second if i see it's necessary a plus for what they did in the first round. They got what they needed, and they got two premier guys. So A plus. All right, our next team is the Panthers. Josh. Panthers. Okay. So with the Panthers draft, let me just pull it up. I think that they had a really good draft, especially with taking Iki Aquanu with their first pick. It really shows that they are going to be relying on their run game because or a run blocker. So I think that that's really good to show, and it's a really good pick. He could have gone first, depending on who was picking, and I think that that is an amazing pick that they did. So let me just make sure. And then their next pick was Matt Corral. I think it's good. Especially the value there. He did fall because of his off-the-field issues. So that's going to be a pretty good pretty good haul. I'm going to have to give that an A-. Okay. Uh, going to next, Josh. Oh, Zach. Okay, cool. Um, With it, uh, Icky is good, but I have to give it a B+. Plus. But it's hard to like assess a draft when you don't have a, a second round pick or a third round pick. And the two biggest people that kind of carry this to a B plus is Iki Aquamu and Matt Corral. These guys are very solid, and I feel like Matt Corral and Iki could be day one starters. It matters how well Sam Darnold plays in training camp. But other than that, I think a really solid draft from them. So it's getting a B plus. What about you, Jack? I'm going to give them an A-. minus. Now, this draft is mainly carried. It was a very limited number of picks because they traded some of them away. This draft is pretty much carried by Icky at the value they got him. They had one of the worst O-lines in the league, and Icky brings that immediate versatility, day one starting, and he is going to be a dominant run blocker from the get-go. So hopefully that should help CMC out to, to stay healthier than normal. That's the goal, of course. Don't know if that's going to be the case, but Icky's a home run versatile player. you got a couple other players like Matt Corral, but overall, nothing special in the mid to late rounds, but Icky's a home run. Matt Corral's a decent pick, and then Brandon Smith is an underrated steal in the fourth round. A- minus for me. Alright, our next team is the Atlanta Falcons. Yuck. Falcons, based on their first pick, I don't... Okay, they got Ritter and London. I'll give them... I'll give them an A- minus as well. London's pretty good there. Could be argued to be the best receiver in the class. Pairing with Pitts, that's good. That's a pretty good duo there. You add a receiver. And then Ritter is your quarterback that you could potentially develop behind Marcus Mariota for a couple years. But overall, Falcons are going to be a rebuilding team. They did what they needed to do. This is a pretty solid draft class. I'll give it an A- minus for now. What about you, Josh? Well, for this draft class, I'm going to have to give them also probably a B plus. I don't know why. I just I feel like something's missing here. Feels like they hit on everything. I just don't know what else I need to see. 
but I know it's something. So I'm going to give this draft a B plus. Zach? I'm going to give it an A minus like Jack. I think Drake London's a very good pickup, especially if his knee issue is true, then that's very bad. But his knee issue doesn't seem to be a big problem with his game, and I believe that he can come back from that. And the other guy I want to talk about is Denison Murder. He is a very committed guy, and he actually wants to stay until he wants the Super Bowl with the Falcons or whatever team. I don't care. Um, but he's a very committed person. I feel like he's going to work very hard, uh, harder than most quarterbacks do. Uh, so, yeah, I think the Falcons had a solid draft. I just, again, like... Josh said, I feel like there's something missing here with this draft. All right, our next team is the Seattle Seahawks. I'll take this one. Charles Cross, pretty good. Uh, most of the guys that they got, I like Boy and Lafay, and it's all right. Kenneth Walker's all right. It kind of brings down the grade to a B plus. I really like this uh, draft. It's working on a need, and having a defeated down Seahawks team as a Cardinals fan, you don't see that a lot uh, in their past couple of years since... Legion of Boom. Um, but yeah, I think that it's a B plus draft. I think that there's something again missing. Um maybe like getting a quarterback like Malik Willis or someone else because you have the chance to get them. But besides that, it was a good draft. But you Jack. I'll give the Seahawks I'll give them a B. This is a solid class. Similar to the Falcons, you can sort of tell that it's shifting from like being a good team to being like a completely rebuilding team. They finally drafted a tackle after Russ is long gone in Denver, so that was fun. And then they got Boye Mafe in the second round, I think is a solid pass rusher. But Charles Cross has potential to be the franchise tackle. I think that's a pretty good start. He felt like the best available tackle on the board. You wanted to build around your offensive line for now, since you're a little undecided with Pete Carroll, Drew Locke. The future's unknown, so just take the best player in the trenches on the board right now. And I think Charles Cross was that guy. He's got big tackle potential. The only thing I didn't like in this draft was the Kenneth Walker thing, and they didn't take a quarterback, so I guess they're committing to Drew Locke. So that'll be interesting if it plays out, but I'll give it a B for now. What about you, Josh? Today, I think that they hit, even on the Kenneth Walker pick, is the New Orleans Saints. Uh... And I'm going to hand this one off to Jack. So, Saints had a fun draft. Saints had a fun draft. I'm going to give it a B plus for now. I like the Olave pick. You lock up the receiver that you really like. Trading up for him, which was surprising but understandable. If you like Olave, you need to take him. That just kind of makes sense. So, I'll give him credit on that one. Trevor Penning also makes a lot of sense. You lose to Arm Armstead. That is a key piece of the Saints offense for years now. So you needed to fix that ASAP. And if they think Penning's the guy, he's a first round. This is about where he was supposed to go. So that was a pretty solid front of the draft. Addressing your offense, fixing it up for Jameis Winston to hopefully continue to play like a pretty good quarterback. So for now, I'll give it a B, B plus range. Solid draft for all things considered. Good job getting the two first round picks and selecting the two guys that you liked at wide receiver and tackle to rebuild your offense. What about you, Zach? Uh, Saints, I think that they get an A-. minus. They hit on the positions that they needed, which is wide receiver and tackle. They're almost, a, in my opinion, they're almost a complete team. I mean, Jameis, I need to see a little bit more, but Saints are pretty good, and they're in a really good spot to make a deep playoff push. What about you, Josh? Well, I'm going to have to also give them a B here. I think the Olave was a reach, but besides that, and maybe Trevor Penning too, but they got their needs, and that's all I can say. They did well. B. All right, our next team is the, on the Lions right now. We are on the Eagles. I'm going to hand this one off to Josh. Okay, the Philadelphia Eagles. They had a pretty interesting draft this year. You know, all things considered. So, I'll be going over it right now. Okay, so, their big pickups here, for me at least, are Jordan Davis and Nicobe Dean. Those two guys are going to be lethal for the defense. I know that they picked a center. Don't really know much about 
right Agent now Bell. learn more in the season about but they picked Jordan Davis well yeah that's a trade I'm not counting trade I'm just kind of here so with the draft they for me two pick that's an A plus right there they got their defense and they got two really good pieces. If I had the A.J. Brown trade in, it's that next level. So I'm going to hand this off to Jack. I'm going to give the Eagles draft class an A, and that is without the A.J. Brown trade involved. I just think they did a good job finding value whenever they were drafting. Jordan Davis was the perfect one. He could get mentored by Fletcher Cox, and that major upside and athleticism could potentially translate into being the next dominant defensive tackle in Philadelphia's path. Another crazy good pick was probably going to be N'Kobe Dean, him falling to the third. It's worth the dice roll on the whole injury thing. I don't know what the deal is. It must have been pretty serious if it was that point, but I think it's so worth rolling the dice on. He could become a potential star at the linebacker position. So overall, you didn't do a lot necessarily outside of the A.J. Brown trade, but whenever you drafted, you did a good job drafting at those positions. And I think this draft was mainly about building up the defense, specifically defensive tackle and linebacker, and they did a good job at that. They got Jordan Davis at pretty much where his value was supposed to be, and then they got Nakobe Dean two rounds later than he should have gone. We'll see if that holds up with entry, but overall, I cannot complain with this draft. I will give it an A. What about you, Zach? Getting an A+. Plus. Um, I'm going to count the A.J. Brown trade in this because, well, it's a really big trade. Um, Jordan Davis is a great selection. No, Kobe Dean, uh, like Jack said, fell two rounds where he was supposed to be. I know it was because of this, a peck issue, but uh, peck issues usually don't lead to bad linebackers, and I feel like he'll be just fine going into preseason and all that. Well, other than that, I think that they had a great draft. Getting A.J. Brown is a huge piece to their uh, team, and I think that they just did really well. Now, our next team is the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to hand this one off to Jack. All right. For the Ravens, they're getting the second A-plus of this draft. I think this draft has a home run in a lot of the sense. First, Kyle Hamilton. That feels like the right fit for him in the Ravens scheme. They could scheme him up to do a lot of things as a box safety, and I think he could reach his full potential in the Ravens system. Second thing, they needed a center pretty bad. They got the best one in the draft and a generational center prospect in Tyler Linderbaum. I think that was a good job, especially if you want to establish a run. So with trading Hollywood away, you want to run the ball, use the tight ends more, and I think a center, a versatile one like Linderbaum, will do the trick in that case. And there are even some ones to hit on in the second and third round, like David Ojabo. He's a swing because of the Achilles thing, but if he can get back 100% healthy, him and Odafe away will be a dominant pass rushing duo together. And then last but not least, Travis Jones out of Connecticut was a solid nose tackle to bring in. But overall, if you just look at the Ravens, they did a great job. They got a lot of cool defensive pieces along with a generational offensive center. I think this is a home run draft for Baltimore. I'm giving it an A+. plus. What about you, Josh? This is probably our greatest A-plus of the video, and I'm giving it to the Ravens. They hit on every single one of their top three picks, or the top three round picks, with a generational center and a bunch of good defensive pieces. The only piece that's worrying me is a Jabo just because of injuries, but I think if he doesn't have injuries, he's fine. So, give me an A. All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to give this an A-. minus. Um, There's one reason why this grade is going down. I love all their selections. It's just, who are they running at wide receiver? Because they... They, I'm going to count this into their draft. I'm counting every trade to their, to this draft. And who is their wide receiver one? I don't understand for Sean Bateman. But other than that, who else do you have on your team? To Lamar Jackson to throw to? Because you can't just be a pure running team in this league. And it's not going to work out if they find a wide receiver quick. So I'm going to give it an A-. minus. That Hollywood Brown trade was not smart to the Cardinals. Bad on the Cardinals, bad on the Ravens. All right, our next team is the Washington football team. I'm going to have this one off to Josh. The Commanders. Just give me a second to pull up their draft. Sorry about that. This doesn't have a lot of give to it, but we are going to be going through the Commanders draft. I think that I didn't really hear. It was kind of a mid-draft if I'm really talking about it. 
nothing really be any kind of oh here it is this is why I don't from this draft I'm gonna have to unfortunately give this a a C plus B minus Jahan Dotson was a read at their pick the work ethic just I don't see right now for the value at 16, but Robinson really makes this draft look real, look and fit right into it. So B minus Zach. Uh, I'm gonna give him a B. Honestly, Jahan Dotson is supposed to go like soon because he is a wide receiver, and teams are getting very scared about paying their wide receivers a lot of money. So getting a good wide receiver at that point is pretty good. Um, other than that, there's not any other notable picks. Um, so yeah, what about you, Jack? I'm gonna give this Washington draft a B minus. To be honest, it was kind of underwhelming. I'm not completely opposed to the Jahan Dotson pick because we know there was going to be a receiver run in the middle to late of the first round, but still a little surprising. I like how he compliments Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel. That's a solid group, but still I felt there were other positions that could have been addressed. And then the only other really notable pick here is drafting Sam Howell in the fifth. So in my opinion, pretty underwhelming draft if you're Washington. Jahan Dotson's okay. But other than that, not a lot going for this draft. I'm going to give it a B-. minus. All right, cool. Our next team is the La- Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah, the LA Chargers. Um, I'm going to hand this off to Jack. Chargers, I will give them probably a B. I like the Zion Johnson pick. They needed to figure out what to do with this, finish off their starting O-line. We know they have Rashawn Slater. We know they have Corey Lindsley. They needed to put the cherry on top, and that's probably Zion Johnson. That's a solid pick to add some pass protection for Herbert. Other than that, not a lot of major moves, just addressing depth. But they were a pretty complete team already, so I don't think they were as worried about the draft. But the key is they hit on that first pick, that one that could have an immediate impact. I think Zion Johnson, starting level guard in the NFL, and he will immediately beef up the Chargers O-line, and give Herbert more time to air the ball out to those weapons. So for now, I'll give it a B. It's nothing special, but Zion Johnson was the right pick there, so I think that this is a solid draft on their part. What about you, Zach? Honestly, uh, Zion Johnson's a home run pick. I think I'm going to give this an A. They they didn't really need anything else in the draft. I mean, working on protection for Herbert would have been helpful, and maybe getting a defensive tackle like Devontae White. He has stuff off the field right now going on. So I think that this is a really good selection. And again, A for my book. What about you, Josh? I would have to say that this is a A. Zion Johnson was their big pickup here, and I think that this will be great to protecting Justin Herbert. So A for me. Alright, our next team is the Tennessee Titans. What do you say about this, Josh? The Tennessee Titans. Their draft was an interesting one, especially in the late rounds when they selected Malik Willis. So, the the Tennessee Titans, let me just get into that. Where the freak is their draft? Here it is. Me a little bit to find it. That's loading. But so they didn't really pick until the second round, it looks like. Selecting Oh wait, nope. So the Titans with their first pick selected Tra I think that this was also a little bit of reach. Roger McCreary and then Malik Willis are their big names for this draft. And I think with all of this that I'm seeing, I'm gonna have to give this B. I'm sorry, I'm going to give it a B. Traylon Burks just brings it down a little bit. For I just don't think that he should have really been taken that high. I know that there was a run off but even to replace A.J. Brown, this was kind of a risky move. So I'm going to give it a B. Willis pick, I don't like to give this a B. Who's next? For the Titans, I think I'll give them 
B plus. I think some of the draft picks I really like. I'm going to go over actually the middle round picks first. Malik Willis is a solid pick. He can develop behind Tannehill, sort of start to threaten Tannehill. And I like McCreary in the second too. That secondary for the Titans is pretty much empty at this point other than Caleb Farley and um, Kevin Bayard. Burks is an interesting one. I'm not opposed to it because once you trade A.J. Brown, I don't really think you have a choice. You need to somehow replace A.J. Brown, and you know that the receiver value is probably not going to be there in the second. So you just take the best receiver available on the fourth, first. I can't blame them for that. They traded A.J. Brown. They needed to find a replacement. It'll be interesting to see how this pans out moving forward. It, the key is probably Burks and Willis. If Willis can be a franchise quarterback, this moves up a lot. So it'll be interesting to see how this draft class develops, but... I think solid mid-rounds and Burks make sense to me, so I'm going to give them a B plus. Good draft all around. What about you, Zach? Uh, I'm going to give this an A, actually. I like the Traylon Burks pick. After losing A.J. Brown, like Jack said, you kind of had to choose someone. Traylon Burks is just like A.J. Brown, skill set-wise. Um, they also have another wide receiver in Robert Woods, but that's besides the point. Uh, Roger McCreary, I love that pick because... Uh, Roger McCreary was supposed to be a first rounder before they looked at his injuries and it's pretty bad. Uh, and then finally Malik Willis, a uh, great player. Um, the only reason he was falling down boards is because, well, people thought he was not, eat, like you couldn't teach him a complex playbook like the Titans run. It's mostly just handing the ball off to Derrick Henry, but that's besides my point. Um, yeah, so I like this Titans draft. I'm going to give it an A. Alright, the next team is the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to hand this one off to Josh. Yeah. To give this draft. It was pretty good. They got their needs. Now, Kenny Pickett, I probably wouldn't have chosen. I probably would have chosen Malik Willis for their system. But teach them. Zach. Can't hear your audio sometimes. Jeez. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Steelers. I think that they get, like, an A. Uh, they did well. I like Kenny Pickett. He's a little, uh, his hands are a little tiny, but who cares? Um, he's the most pro-ready out of every single one of these quarterbacks, and I still believe that, uh, it will take less time for him to get on the field. Mike Tomlin said that, and, yeah, I think Kenny Pickett's a solid yeah, it gets an A just for that. What about you, Jack? I'll give the Steelers an A. This was a pretty weird draft for the Steelers, but I don't hate it. Kenny Pickett, you need a new quarterback. You're not going to be with Mitch Trubisky as your only guy. I think, to be honest, Kenny Pickett's probably beating out Mitch Trubisky or becoming pretty close. He's starting this year. I'm pretty confident in that. So if you have a franchise quarterback, then it's staying an A. I like Pickens, too. He's got some weird off-the-field issues, and he's got a weird draft attire. But other than that, I kind of like the upside there. So solid draft for the Steelers in a weird transitional time for them. But I think the key is we just need to watch as Kenny Pickett develops and see where it goes from there. But for now, A. Right, our next team is the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm going to be taking this one. They took Trent McDuffie in the first round, and they had another selection. It was George Kaloftis. I'm going to give this one an A. Yeah, just an A. Um, Chiefs' biggest needs were actually filled here, and the only need that I didn't see really get filled because they have Justin Reed, but having a guy on the other side would have been nice to find another safety for the for Chiefs team. Uh... Honestly, wide receiver could have been nice, too. I know they picked up Sky Moore a little bit early, uh, later in the draft, and I think that it deserves an A. Um, not an A+. Plus. Uh, Trip McDuffie has issues being undersized, and uh, Carl Loftus has injury problems, and their D-line kind of needed an edge presence last year, and they didn't really see it. So, yeah. What about you, Jack? I'm also going to give the Chiefs a really high A. I can't give them an A+, because I'm only giving out two, but they're pretty close to an A+. I like the McDuffie pick. There is concerns, but I think that the Chiefs needed a cornerback, so it's worth a shot addressing it here. I love Karloftis at 30. I think that's pretty good value. He has potential to develop into a really good pass rusher next to Frank Clark. I think it makes a lot of sense. And then where the Chiefs made most of their money in this draft is they had a pretty solid group in the mid-round. They were able to find high-end talent there. Sky Moore, I think... And with Mahomes' system, Sky Moore could be prone to do big things immediately. And then Leo Chenault, linebacker, I think that's another good one. He could have an immediate impact. So overall, the Chiefs have potentially four starters in this draft. I cannot complain. 
very high A. They were able to address a lot of their main needs, except for probably safety. They really didn't address that till arguably the seventh round. But overall, very good job on the Chiefs' part. I will give them an A. What about you, Josh? Well, I'm going to also have to give them an A, too. And I think that they... And the, excuse me. My words are being weird. They invested in that in the second round in Brian Cook, the safety from Cincinnati. But I think all their picks are hits. Now, they do have a lot of projects, including their undrafted free agent and just did not draft. So, I think all together, this is a A. High A could be an A plus in the future. All right, cool. Our next team is the Green Bay Packers, and I'm going to hand this one off to Josh. Okay, so the Packers draft day was very weird. You know, because Rodgers wanted stuff, but they were choosing other things. It was just a whole mess, which really just feels like a normal Packers draft if we're really talking about it. So their first pick was Quay Walker. That pick is a D+. Plus. Quay is not supposed to go that high, and he wasn't even projected in the first round. Why are you doing that? But their next pick in Devontae Wyatt makes up for it, and Christian Watson just makes it a little bit better. So you guys go from being a D+. Plus to about a, we're going to say, C. It doesn't really bring it up that much higher. Maybe a B minus. But this was a good draft after your first pick. Jack? I'll give the Green Bay Packers a B minus. I don't completely hate the Quay Walker pick. It was a pretty big reach. He does have upside. My main issue with the pick is over Devin Lloyd. Uh, definitely not. That just didn't make sense to me. I think if you were going to take a linebacker, you should have taken Devin Lloyd. But Devontae Wyatt's a pretty solid pick. You bolster your defensive line with Kenny Clark. And then Christian Watson, I'm intrigued by. I know he played at a smaller school, but we'll see how quickly Aaron Rodgers will be able to develop him and if he'll be able to step up and play a major role in the Green Bay Packers receiving core with the loss of Devontae Adams. But overall, Jeff was kind of hit or miss for me. I'll give it a B- minus for now. They were able to add some solid pieces all around, but the question is, Will these pieces make the day one impact they need to contend for a championship? What about you, Zach? I'm going to give this, sadly, a C+. Plus. Um, I like the Quay Walker pick. Um, it's all right, but again, over um, Devin Lloyd, I would never do that in a million years. Quay Walker's just not as built as Devin Lloyd has been. Um, also, Devontae Wyatt's a very good selection, and that's helping this become a C+. But the other thing is Christian Watson. You're not going to find a Devontae Adams replacement from the get-go, which is what you need to win a championship right now because Rodgers is super mad. Um, Christian Watson's coming from a school that is very small, and he is not going to be able just to be able to turn it up the first game. So I feel like it's not going to be the best, and I feel like that deserves a C plus. If they had more time, I would give it a better grade, but they don't have time right now to do that. All right, our next team is actually, we're going to skip down a, a lot of spots to the New England Patriots at 29. I'm going to hand this one off to Jack. Actually, no, no, no. We have, don't we have the Bills? Bills. Right? Yeah, yeah, we have the Bills. My bad, my bad. Yeah, my bad. Jack, still go. Bills. All right, Bills, giving them an A. Similar to the Chargers, I don't care as much about their mid-rounds. They're not like a rebuilding team. They're like two pieces away. And they got those two pieces, in my opinion. Kalir Lam. Great pick. He can play across from White, develop into a really good corner. And then their second biggest need, running back. Josh Allen cannot be your only running back. Zach Moss and Devin Singletary don't really catch on necessarily. They're very hit or miss. I think James Cook has that high ceiling potential they're looking for in a running back. And it's good value in the second round for a contender to snag a running back like this. I like it. And then the other thing that you can hit on is Matt Ariza, punter. That was interesting. But I like it. I remember their punter had a very bad game against the Jets and wasn't the greatest punter. So you could do stuff like draft punters. But overall, you needed like three players to complete your roster, and you did that. So you're getting an A. What about you, Josh? I'm also going to give them an A. They just rebuilt and reload. There wasn't really much big things here that they needed to cover. So they did their job. A, Zach. I'm going to... Give them an A also. The only thing I wish that they took was a wide receiver. That's besides the point. I liked it. Um, I like the career alum. He's very good. Um, I liked all their picks mostly. Getting a running back was very helpful. So, yeah. A. 
All right, our next team is the Dallas Cowboys. Josh? I'm going to have to give this a C+. Plus. A automatic C+. Plus. Tyler Smith is a good player. He has holding problems. And I don't understand why he was drafted. And I'll have to give Jerry Jones, you, sir, get an F for showing your entire draft board to the media because you want to prove a point. So I'm going to give this a C plus for Tyler Smith. Zach? It's an all right draft, but Tyler Smith is kind of bad. Uh, honestly, he rose up draft boards for no really reason. He had holding problems and... Tulsa, which is not even the best talent-wise, and it's just very disappointing. Uh, when you have a t center talent like Linderbaum, the next pick later is kind of a disappointing pick. Now, if Tyler Smith becomes really good, doesn't have holding problems, that's my bad, but I say it's a C plus, maybe even a C. I'm going to give it a C, actually. Um, What about you, Jack? Cowboys are going to get a C for me. Very underwhelming. I didn't see Tyler, Swift's, or Tyler Smith going this high. He has penalty problems, like Josh and Zach said, so he'll fit right in with the Cowboys. But still, not really a fan of this draft. Not a lot of stuff going on here. I, you address needs, sort of, but at the same time, there weren't like any high-end players. Hopefully, Tyler Smith can develop into your starting probably right tackle to replace Lyle Collins, but we'll see. Not a big fan of this one. It gets a C. We're going to skip a couple picks down because we've already talked about the Ravens to the Packers. We're going to talk about the Patriots. And, Jack, you want to start off with this? Patriots, they get a C- minus to a D. Very Patriots-esque draft. There were a lot of weird reaches and unnecessary trade downs. The normal Bill Belichick stuff. Cole Strange, not supposed to go there. I understand that he rose a little bit, maybe to be like a second round pick instead of a third round pick, but moving into the first round was a little surprising. Still could be a good player because it's Bill Belichick and the Patriots seem to just create offensive linemen. And then the receiver out of Baylor, Taquan Thornton, another interesting pick, kind of reachy, but it's at a position of need. So overall, it's very Patriots-like draft. Not a lot of amazingness. We'll see with Cole Strange and Thornton what this means for Nikhil Harry. But if one is just one of them can catch on, this draft is going to move up a little bit. But overall, pretty uneventful draft with a lot of questionable picks in my eyes. What about you, Josh? Well, in this draft, I am giving it an F. This is the first ever F that I've given. Just, I am not letting them get away from selecting Cole Strange with their first round pick. They could have waited. They could have traded down. But no. Bill Belichick had to have Cole Strange for, from Chattanooga. So you, Sir Belichick, get an F. Zach? I'm going to give it a D plus. I'm going to be a little nicer than Josh, but a little bit ruder than Jack. Um, Yeah, Cole Strange is just the one that really turns me off this draft. I stopped watching the Patriots drafting any players after they took a Chattanooga guy that the Rams were laughing at him for because literally picked the guy who was supposed to be I never watched film on this guy I, nope I watched like a hundred players uh, maybe yeah, a hundred and like twenty players of film Cole Strange didn't make my list so if he's not making my list and when we were sitting all together and I said who the heck is this guy that's just no that's not okay and if I haven't watched the guy's film obviously Belichick's watched more film on him but I don't care he looks like he could, like, just basically eye in that pocket because I've never seen him actually block correctly. So, yeah, we got some problems there. Our next team is the Bengals. I'm going to hand this one. Actually, you know what? I haven't gone a little bit. I'm going to take this one. Um, Yeah, Bengals. Uh, I'm going to give them a B plus. Honestly, the Bengals didn't need too much. Uh, Getting a safety that could also play nickel corner. He's not going to replace... Uh, Eli Apple, but hopefully he can be a solid piece on a team that really needed a corner to uh, compete with the Rams, and Daxton Hill could be great for them for that. What about you, Josh? Well, with this, I would just have to give them an A. They did what they needed to do. They got their positions of need. Besides corner, that would be my only complaint, but a good A. That's it. Okay. I'm also going to give them an A. Similar to the Chargers and the Bills, this is a team that didn't need a lot. 
I think what they wanted to do is add some players to the secondary to hopefully cover a little better. And they did that in Dax Hill and Cam, Ta Cam Taylor uh, Britt. Dax Hill, big fan of the versatility, nickel corner. And if something were to happen with Jesse Bates, because he's not under contract after this year, he could slide into safety if necessary. So he just brings a lot of versatility in the back end of the Bengals team. I think that could be a key piece that they're missing to put them over the top. All right, and not our last team, but because we probably will have honorable mentions. Um, but we have the Minnesota Vikings. I'm going to hand this one off to Jack. So this draft for the Vikings was kind of an emotional roller coaster. Traded down 20 spots, but when the dust settled, I'm going to give it a B. I'm not completely opposed to this draft. They were able to address the secondary with two high-end players, Lewis Sign and Andrew Booth. So that's a CB and a safety. I can't really complain with those first two picks. They also did a couple other stuff in the late round. Nothing super notable, but I can't complain about trading down, getting some extra assets while addressing the secondary. Even if the trade charts aren't a big fan of it, I'm not completely opposed to it. You added two potential starters. So I think this is overall, this is a solid draft. There were some places I wanted them to address, specifically the offensive line, probably the center position. Garrett Bradbury not been very good lately, but they did not do that, chose not to. But I can't complain about them addressing a kind of thin secondary at this point in time. So I'll give it a B for now. What about you, Zach? I'm going to also give it a B. Oh, I like the Lewis us. Uh, sign trade or uh, trade down because it really works i mean harrison smith is getting kind of old and this pick kind of makes sense um the other pick i really love is andrew booth i want the cardinals to pick them when they were picking at 23 before they trade it and i think we'll talk about that a little later um but gosh i love andrew booth's film and when i watched him i liked him and i liked the vikings that they got him How about you josh I'm going to have to give this a B-. I don't know, just, it seemed pretty good. They hit on what they needed to. I just don't know. Just like I said for the Falcons, it's missing something. I just don't know what it is right now. So, give him a B-. minus. right. We're going to talk about a couple teams, if any of you guys have in mind. I'm just going to talk about the Cardinals, because I can get to talk about them. Um... Cardinals draft is actually an A minus. I think Cardinals hit on a lot of their picks. They got um I'm gonna mention a couple people here. Uh Hollywood was a very good trade and how we executed that to give basically the Ravens no wide receivers and now that DeAndre Hopkins has PEDs in the system for a little bit. Not too good. Um but he gets to be a first option. Kyler gets his old teammate. That's pretty good. The other couple picks is a Maje Sanders, which is a running back coming out of U USC, very good. And then uh, two other players, which is Cameron Johnson and Cameron Johnson and Trey McBride. Both really good players, Trey McBride being the best tight end and Cameron Johnson being a very solid edge rusher, which we did need after Chandler Jones' loss. Do you guys have any other honorable mentions or do you want to talk about the Cardinals? I got a few... I'm going to go over a few honorable mentions. Start with the Bears. Weird draft. Don't completely hate it. Don't love it. Similar to the Vikings, they added two pretty solid players in the secondary in Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker. They also added Phyllis Jones. My only question is, they didn't prioritize offense. They wanted to prioritize that secondary first. So it'll be interesting to see if Justin Fields is able to hold up. They drafted four O-linemen, so hopefully at least one of them can stick. So that's an interesting approach by the Bears. Another one is the Cardinals. I'm going to give them a solid A. I think they were able to add a lot of firepower, and they were able to address some positions of need that they lost in Chandler Jones. Trey McBride, I'm not counting the Hollywood trade, but Trey McBride coming in is going to be another great pass rusher, mentored by Zach Ertz. And they were able to get two pass rushers in Cameron Thomas and Meiji Sanders. So if one of them can just play a solid edge presence, they should be all right. But overall, they were able to add, even without a first round pick, they did a pretty good job. Let's see, Cleveland, nothing notable. Colts... Um, no. And then I guess the other team I'll hit on is the 49ers for a little bit. I'll give them B-. minus. Interesting draft. I'm curious how Drake Jackson pans out. But other than that, nobody else really super notable that didn't have a first round pick. So those are, the, I guess, the three teams that I thought had some intriguing drafts in the second and third round, even without the third round, even without the first round pick. So solid grades all around for some of these back end teams without first round picks. What about you, Josh? Okay, so 
I just want to say it's pretty cool how the Texans drafted three players from the Houston area, one from Cy Fair, one from Stafford, and the other one from I forgot the school's name, dang. I know it's in Humble, Texas, so that's pretty cool, but for this next take, I'm going to use my George Pickens hood. So, was ever arguing that Georgia has better football than Texas? You guys are completely wrong. Just because you guys have less of a population and 31 players drafted in Texas, that does not make you guys the better program. It just means that you had more select. Saying that, that doesn't mean that you're better than Texas. So, to anybody saying that, you are not smart. But please keep subscribing to Frontline Football. And that's all I got to say. All right. If you liked our video, hit the like button. If you really liked it and you want to keep seeing more of us, you should subscribe. There is a button right probably down there. Um, Yeah. And then, Jack, hit the plugs. As always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at FrontlineFB. Links in the description, as always. <clears throat> Sorry this video is a little late for the draft grading. Stuff didn't line up for the most part. But now that the dust has settled, it's going to be coming out pretty quick. And we'll see... How these players work out so look for a redraft now that we're entering the dark part of the offseason probably redrafts tier list etc all that fun stuff we'll see you guys back here probably next week for a new video yeah.